Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans heritage and today we are going to be talking about our very first delisted UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Liverpool Maritime Mercantile City, which in what was it 2021 was officially delisted from the UNESCO World Heritage Site and it caused quite the controversy if we must say because the city of Liverpool claims that what they're doing isn't that bad and that it should still maintains its heritage, while as UNESCO says, these new buildings are take away from the character and defining features of this area. So yeah. kind of an interesting topic, but we figured we'd dive right into it. Yeah. So uh, the, Mar the Maritime Mercantile City uh, is only the third... Uh, uh, shall we say UNESCO heritage site to lose its world heritage status um it was only a world heritage site for 17 years however in those 17 years uh the UNESCO heritage uh you, you, or you just UNESCO in general I should say deemed that uh ongoing developments along the waterline and docks were too detrimental to the integrity of the I guess original, at least like the original waterline and original skyline associated with that, to um, to basically not impede the uh, the value of the site. Uh, and a lot of this ties around Liverpool's docks in a Victorian setting, um, very specifically the Victorian era, because yeah. Liverpool is one of the major training trading centers in the UK in this time and in the world because of the British Empire and helped grow the British Empire and was a great place to move people between the UK and uh, the Americas and featured a lot of important buildings, including the Port Authority building and a lot of other things that were there, including St. George's Plateau. And these um, buildings along the waterfront contributed to the aesthetic and feel and you could get a glimpse almost back into this time period and one of the things that had ended up happening, and I'll flip over to a BBC article on the same topic, is they built a couple of buildings along the waterfront that really did change the character and defining aesthetics of the area. And uh, off screen here, Cullum and I went over this because I work a lot with historic preservation and with... Um, a lot of authorities that do similar things and one of the things that really matters is view shed and character defining and here you see a side by side a, a 16 year difference between the two buildings or between the two pictures where you can see the liver building the cuner building the port authority but then in this new picture you see this liverpool museum that blocks and obstructs almost what looks like 30 percent 40 percent of that total landscape and then you see further construction near the Radio City Tower that blocks the view of the tower. It blocks like yeah, sixty percent of it. Yeah, directly that directly impedes the view sh the view shed from the water to the uh, to the monuments, which is one of the view sheds that are primarily concerned with here in terms of UNESCO being that the main uh, qualification is the port. And if you change what the view is to and from the port, then you are changing uh, the integrity of the site. Um, this site is important not only because it's 18th century and you know fairly well preserved, but also because what Liverpool did in the 18th and 19th centuries went on to become global standards for port cities. So Liverpool is effectively the first modern port in history. And you are changing what that looks like. And UNESCO took great exception to that. Well, and I think one of the important things to note here that UNESCO doesn't do a very great job with discerning between is this was a, a UNESCO World Heritage District area, which covered multiple poor parts of the city and multiple buildings within the city. And... To their credit, uh, the city of Liverpool has made the argument that they still have three or four buildings that are qualitatively eligible for the UNESCO list and that they want on the UNESCO list versus the district. And one of the conversations that we had off camera 
that I think is important to note and that a lot of people get really um, concerned with is you can, and a lot of times they will build in historic areas or they will do work on historic buildings. However, there are specific guidances, specific guidelines that you must follow that can and will impact development and that are very, very specific choices that have to be made. In context with Liverpool here, they completely disregarded that. Part of the yeah, conversation that could be had is this Museum of Liverpool could potentially still be put on this waterfront had it taken a similar design or a similar aesthetic that wouldn't impede any of these buildings or their view shots. It, yeah, there yeah, is the, a proper way to be done. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the key is, uh, one of the keys is stylistic facade. If you look like, you know, if you are surrounded by gothic buildings uh, and you want to build something new in a gothic area that is on a UNESCO heritage site, you are expected to try to look like a gothic building for the purposes of not suddenly having something completely different in the middle of this heritage area. And, you know, create the illusion of unity, even if you aren't actually part of the heritage site. And I understand it to a certain degree where architects and engineers are really trying to uh, lament themselves. They're really trying to inspire new ideas. Styles change, techniques change, ideas change, and you want to make your mark and you want to leave your mark. And museums tend to want to have those statement architecture styles. However... It, it, it deviates from the norm and can impact them and it's 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 kind of this double-edged sword realistically here because on one hand liverpool's trying to revitalize its downtown area it's trying to revitalize these areas and input new money input new structures input new housing they're trying to revitalize their community you can't hate yeah. them for that but yeah, no no yeah but yeah. on the flip side they bypassed these protections. They bypassed this historic. They took they took detriment to the region to try and do that, and it it shows a little bit of a lack of disregard on one hand, but then on another hand, like yeah. there there is no right answer is what I'm trying yeah, to there, get. There, yeah, there there is no right answer. It does feel a little bit like Liverpool felt that once they were a UNESCO site, they would always be a UNESCO site, didn't have to do any extra consulting for anything they wanted to make. Because honestly, just given the number of different uh, uh, locales listed in this original UNESCO listing, uh, Liverpool could have theoretically negotiated with UNESCO and said, hey, we're gonna build X, Y, and Z over here uh, next to these uh, you know, this part of the site and we're going to do it our way and called for a boundary change to at least preserve the UNESCO standing of some of the site without having it be all of its original boundaries because boundary inscriptions change all the time. Uh, and if Liverpool wanted to do this and had the understanding, which they probably did in the back of their minds, that UNESCO would object then that is a negotiation they should have had and a negotiation I think they still can have in the future if they want to get at least some of this site relisted. And that's also not even to consider the part... I, I had to look it up because I, I saw it a bit in one of the articles, but um, Everton Football Club uh, also is going to be developing along the waterfronts in Goodison Park as a mixed-use space. So another development that will be bringing a lot of money in but will have a detriment to the unesco site so it's it's kind of an interesting one it's a cool site it's really authentic it's very unique to the region and it is very universally important however this is what happens when you have architects and engineers trying to dictate city policy and from a historical yeah. standpoint it is kind of disappointing personally yeah yeah i know yeah, there, there, there's no winners here. Just everything just kind of feels bad, and that is that is unfortunate. But it, this is this is something that happens. It happens rarely, and just we really felt it was something interesting and new to talk about because no one ever hears about sites getting delisted because no. it so rarely happens. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a comment down below, and we will see you in the next video.